Are you a clinician or healthcare entrepreneur and you love what you do? You love helping people, but you feel stuck because you're in a clinic all the time. Guess what? Freedom is possible for you. Today's expert guest has some awesome news you don't want to miss. Stay tuned. Welcome to another edition of the Best Advice Podcast Show with your host, Angela Watley. I'm so excited about today's guest because I've actually used (laughs) physical therapists in the past. So we'd like to welcome Dr. Siobhan France. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. So I have, you know how you go, well, personally, I go to a PT and you don't ask any questions. You just do what they want you to do. And any questions that you have, you just keep them inside, right? So what drew you to, to PT, to physical therapy? So my mom actually had a stroke when she was 29 and I was five years old at the time. And I remember being picked up from school and going to exercise class, which was really physical therapy where my mom was having physical therapy. And I just saw my mom get better. She was not walking for a while. Then she was in a wheelchair. Then she started using a brace on her foot. And then she got up and she started walking. And I grew up saying, I want to be just like Tammy. And Tammy was my mom's physical therapist. So it really wasn't until I got to high school that I'm like, what is it that Tammy did? What was that exercise thing? And I just knew that I wanted to help people. I knew that I wanted to serve people. And I said, how cool is it to help somebody go from not walking to walking? Um, And I basically watched a transformation. I said, I want to do that. Yeah. So did you go the direction of um, like working with, you know, under an agency or did you go the solo route? Like what was your, your path? That's a funny question because my dad actually planted the entrepreneurial seed in my mind at a very young age. And he said, I don't care what you do, but you got to work for yourself. So that seed was always planted. So I went to undergrad, got into doctor of physical therapy school, started working And I was really thinking about starting my own practice. And everybody is telling me, you're so great. You should start your own thing. Well, honestly, just a year into my career, I was feeling completely burnt out. I woke up one day and I said, this cannot be my life. The feeling that I thought I was going to have in serving people this way just wasn't there. Double, Double booking, too many patients at one time. Patients coming late and I'm feeling bad about running late for other patients. I mean, it was it was a mess and so much documentation. And I said, this isn't how I felt service should feel like. And I just remember being so little and God literally planting something in my heart of I knew how I was going to feel. Being of being of service. And when I didn't feel like that, I said, there is a dis a disconnect and I was completely burnt out. So. I actually decided not to open my own practice because what I had recognized was if I'm feeling this way working in a clinic, if I open my own practice, very likely not much is going to change because this is still a business. It's healthcare, but it's still a business. And I I kind of saw it as golden handcuffs. Yes, I would probably set my own hours, but I was still in that trading time for money um, mm-hmm. and feeling like I couldn't take a vacation. And I kind of started to like future pace what that would be like. So I actually did not open my own practice. Wow. That's an interesting story. Was there ever, can you think of an instance of a transformation that just like you can't get out of your head? Like they came to you one way and they left you one way. And you're just like, that was the reason I got into this. A patient, you mean? Like a patient transformation? Yeah. Yes. Many, many. And, And I actually think the transformation wasn't physical for my patients. Yes, it, yes, physical for sure. You're coming to me with shoulder pain or knee pain, yes. But I, I really have a gift for helping people expand and elevate. And I started just naturally falling into this coaching realm and helping them expand and see their health differently, helping them make habit, like habit changes. And so the transformation wasn't just physical. My patients were having just this 
full on experience, whole body experience, and even life experiences. And I started thinking to myself, there, there's just something bigger than just treating the physical body. And when I really got into it, I said, it's their mindset that is shifting their physical body to stay in pain or for them to always wake up feeling like life is over, mm -hmm. right? And so it didn't matter sometimes what I did physically. I had to start talking to them mentally and helping them shift in that way. So transformation, yes, physically, there's many but I started to see this just natural change on how my patients started to really operate. I love that. I love that. Everybody knows like I'm also into mindset. So the fact that you mentioned that is so powerful. And I can imagine patients coming to you and not just being physically broken, but mentally feeling mm. like, oh, I'll never get back. I'll never be able to, oh, woe is me. And you're like, I can see you saying, no, no, you have all the potential in the world. You yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's me know. all day. Yeah. And it's and it's it was really helping them believe they can get better. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like and I used I'm very honest. I used to say if that's your level of thinking, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to actually help you. And I said, "But here's what we can do." And I would just start breaking things down in baby steps. And it would often be actually having them journal around what having a having a body pain-free feel like. After you have a total knee replacement, what is it like when you can go up and down the steps again and you don't need, you know, your husband or significant other to keep bringing you food? And it's like actually having you live in the experience of what is possible so that they can start seeing these micro shifts. And I said, listen, just just humor me for a second. <laughs> right. Just humor. Just humor me and play with this. And when they did, I mean, the subtle changes in their mindset started to make them feel better physically. I love that so much. So you made the transition. Well, you, do you do both now? You PT and coaching or? I don't. I'm full-time coaching. Full-time coaching. Okay. What yeah. kind of coaching do you do? So I, I actually have had multiple pivots. When I first started coaching, it was December of 2021. And I started with healthcare burnout coaching. So I actually started my first business back in 2014, which is really just two years after graduating physical therapy school. And after one year, I was like, I'm so burnt out. But in 2014, I went to an internet marketing for newbies event. And I just was like, whoa, there's money to be made on these interwebs and I could <laughs> expand my knowledge and help more people online. And so I monetized my degree. My first business was creating exercise and rehab programs. Mm -hmm. And I was selling that just through my website. I had a monetized YouTube channel. I had a physical product on Amazon. I was like, Whatever they told me to do, like I was taking fast action, but I kind of found myself subtly feeling like that really wasn't my purpose. And I really wanted to do more to connect mind, body, spirit. I was still kind of only treating the physical body. So then I got into like pain coaching and mindset coaching for people that were in chronic pain. And then that kind of pivoted. I kept going deeper and deeper into the root of an issue. So I joined a network marketing company that was all around cell, cellular health and aging and lowering inflammation in the body. I built a really beautiful team. But what I noticed is I kept falling into coaching. Everything was always around coaching my team, coaching the patients. And so December of 2021, I started burnout coaching. Because, you know, 2020 had happened. Everybody was feeling burnt out. People were looking to make shifts. And I just got really good at helping people make decisions on how to overcome that, what they wanted to do next in their, in their life. And so that has gradually morphed into business and embodiment coaching. As my business grew, people were asking me questions like, how did you do that? How did you do this? How did you do this? And so that's what I do now. I help clinicians and not just clinicians, but that's my target market, essentially, I help them bring their expertise, whether it's clinical or non-clinical, bring that online, help them build a personal brand and develop themselves as a coach, but also even move into productizing themselves as well. Wow. That's, I think there's a really powerful lesson in there for, especially for people who are new entrepreneurs and they're like, oh, if I pick this, I have to stick with this no matter what. And yes. that's proof that you do not, you are, you have all the power in the world to pivot whenever you feel the need to, because it's about fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that, that's such a good point because people feel like it's so cut and dry. Mm -hmm. And once they get started, like they're set for life. And I think that mentality comes from 
having this degree, whether it's a higher education degree, it's like, all right, I got to do this for, for the rest of my life. And so if they're like, if I'm going to start a business, this thing has to be it for the rest of my life. It's like, we're looking for such a definitive without recognizing we are expansive. And that's what I love about entrepreneurship. It's got so much play, so much room for us to be and evolve and kind of morph into different directions as we grow. Yeah. There's so much freedom in realizing yeah. the choice. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. Okay. So what um what avenue do you think is like the best pivot for people who are trying to go online? You know, you basically you deal with people who have a physical business, right? And then you're trying to help them morph online. So they don't have a physical business. A lot of my clients actually either have some kind of nine to five job, whether they work in a hospital, they work in a clinic, some are are already in business, but they have a private practice. And so they're like, I want to be online. They want more flexibility. They want more freedom. They want more fun. Yeah. You know, they want more fun and they don't want their income to just be tied to a patient. I think one of the coolest things about entrepreneurship and just us being expansive and creative beings is we start to recognize we have more than just our clinical side. We have so many other things we've gotten involved with and we have so much life experience. It's really just a matter of how do we take that life experience and our skills and turn that into a business that serves the market. So the people that I serve, we can't turn our clinical brain off. Like it just, it's always on, it's always running. But what I help them do is also blend their non-clinical parts of themselves, their life experience, whether they're a mom, they're a caregiver. It's like, they really want to give and serve in different ways than just, you know, teaching someone how to exercise, right? So it's, it's bringing that online and helping them start signing clients. So what would be, in your approach, what would be the first step to this transition? Yeah. Oh, it's such a great question. So because everybody is at different levels in terms of how comfortable they are putting themselves out there, um, have they already worked with people or kind of tested this model? What I found that the common theme is we've got to do some market research. We actually have to understand if the offer that you want to put out there, does the market want it? So I always encourage All of my clients, yes, we do market research, but then we also go out and we get beta clients. Whether it's free or paid, we start working with someone so we can get results because you have to show yourself, oh, I can do this. Because oftentimes we have the knowledge to help people, but we're fearful of, will it work for someone else? Mm -hmm. Will I be able to consistently get results? And then when you start adding in price, it's like, well, will someone pay me? So I'm like, we actually have to start taking those steps and we can't worry about all that. Let's go out and let's go help people. Let's go get results because now you're going to feel like the person. That's my big thing. If we're going to build a business, you got to feel like a business owner. You got to be the business owner, which means we have to take the action steps of one. So let's go in there and like work with the people. I think that's another great lesson because you have a lot of people who don't know how to start. They just have this idea in their head and you gave them what you said, gave them permission to even if it's not paid, I'm mean, not saying to do it for hundreds of people, right? Correct, correct, it's correct. Out, and then this is a good way to, I, I'm assuming, you know, based on what you said, also get testimonials based on, you know, your, your, what you, your program or whatever you have those people experiencing. Is that what? Yes, you're... yes, absolutely. It's, it's not hundreds of people by any means. Yeah. We're like, let's go get two to three and let's start helping them. Let's start actually understanding what components of your knowledge base is solving the problem that you believe in your mind that you can already solve, right? And then let's actually develop a framework and a process that you're going to consistently take your people through. Because when you have a framework and a process, that improves your marketing. And what I found is people just have all this knowledge, but without a process or a framework, their marketing is all over the place or they don't really know how to guide themselves in the marketing world. And they're like, no one's buying my stuff. I'm like, well, it's not very clear. Yeah. So once you start helping people, it it changes you. There's something that wakes up where you're like, oh, I can do this, right? And you know, as well as I do, the first thing people need is belief. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I think there's a, actually another lesson. You're giving so many really good nuggets in this. I love I it. Just get out of roll. There's like another lesson in that that I heard is that, okay, so you pick this lane or you pick this niche. It's even okay to change your process 
It's yeah. even okay to tweak it. You don't have to stick to one way to deal with this one niche. So I think, oh, I love that you said that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's entrepreneurship is if you're coming from that nine to five world is actually breaking out of the rigidity. Like that, that in and of itself is like, you actually have space here to be yourself and, and, play and it should be fun. Yes, it's serious, but it should also be fun, especially in the coaching space as you're building a personal brand, because that's actually what makes you very magnetic online. And I think with the way of social media, everyone's got the, <laughs> the five second dancing pointing things. I had somebody, it's so funny. I had someone message me just a couple days ago and she said, how do you create content the way that you do that's not trendy? And I said, you calling me not trendy, but I knew exactly what she meant. She's like, I can see that you're being so authentic to you. Mm -hmm. She's like, how do I do that? I said, oh, I get it. I'm starting to understand now even different layers of my potential clients, what they're seeing and the kind of viewpoints that they're thinking that they need to be like that in order to make money. So how do you deal with that apprehension of people who are not necessarily not necessarily online, not necessarily into social media, and now they have to be? Mm. We find the platform made for you because the truth is, is you have a purpose, you have a voice, you have a message, you are a message carrier. And so it's like, what avenue are you going to decide to get your message through? Because not, not everybody's made for Instagram. Not everybody's made for Facebook and I or tick or TikTok. I love the YouTube platform. I've been I restarted my channel and so I'm back on YouTube because I felt so confined on Instagram. And so there's people who like to write. Well, we can actually do blogging. There's ways that you can start getting publications. There's so many different avenues, but we have to understand what is the best way you express your voice and your message because once we can dial in on that it's easier for your people to hear you because if you're trying to confine your message to Instagram or a 90 second reel, but there's more in you and you're feeling stifled, the message isn't going to land. Yeah. I love that. So it sounds like you also take their, you br you're bringing them out of their shell in a way, right? Mm -hmm. But you also take their comfort level into consideration. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Like yeah. Talents. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that, you won't have to do hard things. We have to do a lot of hard things, right? We, a lot of it will feel uncomfortable, but if the goal is to start taking steps, we need to do something, right? So let's start within comfort. I know a lot of people kind of go against me when I say like, start in your comfort zone. Everyone's like, your comfort zone, you know, that's where all the success is. I'm like, well, some people will never achieve it because they don't feel safe enough to actually step outside. So what can we do that they haven't done yet that is still within their comfort zone so yeah. that they can just get in the energy and momentum of I'm doing this? Then we can say, then we can take some leaps and bounds. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Sometimes I think, I think it's, some people have to remember it's okay to do it scared. It's okay yeah. to do it scared. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And we absolutely will have to but we also have to build up some proof for ourselves, right? And it's like, all right, I'm going to stack this proof within my comfort zone and I'm going to feel like I'm the person. It's so much easier to leap from once you've already built something up. But if we're trying to jump from here all the way to the other side of the bridge, it's like, I don't think I can do that. But if you stacked up some skills, you stacked up some action and you got into momentum, it's like, oh, I'm a little bit higher than I was before. It's now easier to jump. So I love how you think. And I, to go back to the beginning of what you said, because I was like, wow, that's actually so crucial. You said you grew up in a household that embraced entrepreneurship. My dad, my yeah. dad planted that seed for sure. How much can you imagine your life now if you did not have that seed planted? <sighs> You know, that's, I've never had anybody ask me that. And it really chokes me up, honestly, because I realize that part of the reason why that seed is planted is so I can help plant it in someone else who didn't have that, but knows that they're made for more. My dad, my parents are not American. Both my parents immigrated here from uh, Trinidad to give my brother and I a better life. And my dad is a blue collar worker. He did heating, heating and air conditioning. You know, he worked for a company and he also did some work on the side. And so I saw him in 
entrepreneurship, quote unquote, if you will, right? He was doing his own thing. But I noticed that there was parts where it's like he didn't leave his full-time job because that was stable. So he always had the full-time job and his side hustle. So I watched it, right? I watched where he'd work during the week and grow the side hustle. I was a competitive figure skater. And I knew part of the part of the reason why I could do that, because figure skating is not cheap, yeah. is because he had a side hustle. So I saw that. And when he did lose his job, he had something to fall back on. I saw that too. And even though he did hard labor, he was still working for himself, right? And there were, there was a freedom in that where he knew he could still take care of us, even though he didn't have a full-time job. And so that seed was planted and I watched it. And I think it's what actually has kept me in the game because this, this is hard. Entrepreneurship is not the easiest thing in the world, but he always said entrepreneurship is not for the quickest. It's for those who have endurance. And I learned that and I didn't realize I had really lived by those words. I had really lived by those words. And now as I'm, you know, deeper into my faith, I realize half the stuff he was telling me, it's all in the Bible. (laughs) It's all in the Bible. So I, I'm, I'm rooted in that. I'm rooted in that a lot. And I think I'm, I'm really here to pass that on because there's people that didn't have that experience and, and couldn't see it. And I feel like I've been groomed in it, even though nothing happened until later on in my life. I was groomed in it to have a different level of grit than I think most people were probably brought up in. Yeah. So there's even another lesson I just heard in that, in that a lot of people feel that, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm working, but I want to be an entrepreneur. So I have to quit my job so I can Mm -hmm. be an entrepreneur. And it's like, you don't have. You don't. Yeah. 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 you have to keep a roof over your head. You have to keep food. You know, you may have a family to support. Yeah. And that adds so much extra pressure if you take that leap and you have nothing to do that with. Yes, so. yes. That I think that really goes back to this all or nothing principle mm-hmm. where we think like we got to do it all or we can't do it at all. And honestly, that is a subconscious block that people have and create for themselves because what they're really worried about is if I put in this effort, it's not going to work. So they make themselves believe that they got to quit their job or that they can't do it side by side. It's like we add on all these barriers because the underlying fear is I probably can't do this Mm -hmm. or I'm not going to be successful or I'll put in all this effort and I won't make the money. And so they're like, in order for me to make that not real, it's like, I just don't have time. I don't think I can. I got to, I can't quit. It's all these things, but the actual, it's just, it's fear. It's fear. I agree with that. So I have one final question for you. So with everything you experienced and overcome and and learned, what's the one thing that you can, let's see, how do I phrase it? One best piece of advice you could give another woman who's watching today, even if it's not related to what you do. The best piece of advice I can honestly say (laughs) is to allow yourself to feel the human experience and pain of the way that your job is or your career or your life right now. Allow yourself to feel that pain as you take steps towards the life you do want. I do believe that there is a separation that happens where we're so ingrained in how our life is now that in order to get to the next level and see something different and create something different, there is a visceral human experience of pain where it's like guilt or shame for the decisions that we've made. And when we take steps, we actually have a very visceral letting go process and it's painful and it, it, it will really challenge you. But the truth is beyond that visceral painful experience is where the gold is. And I don't just mean gold is money. I mean, the gold is in your, in your purpose. But the thing that people are resisting is the visceral experience because we don't like to feel pain. We're going to push away. But if you can allow yourself to step into subtleties of pain where it could just be, hey, I'm going to take one action that makes me feel uncomfortable. I might separate myself from one friend who keeps, you know, talking down or or talking bad or trying to hold me back. Like you're going to start to notice these things. Allow that visceral painful experience to happen. 
because it really is part of the process and it doesn't mean anything is wrong. It is actually the birthing into, into your purpose. Dr. Siobhan, I love that so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. You're, what you said is just so powerful. There's so many lo- like nuggets of wisdom in there. It's just, this is going to be like defi- a definite rewatch. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, you're welcome. So thank you all for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share with someone you care about. And as always, keep going and keep growing. Mm-hmm.